This is my friend Bob. Bob weighs just over 100 kilos, most of which is in this base here, which is filled with 100 litres of water. One litre of water weighs one kilo. Because all of that weight is down there, Bob is far more stable than a human being. Uh, not least because if you do that to a human being, they'll start to lose their footing very quickly. Whereas Bob, rec whereas Bob recovers his very, very quickly. So knocking Bob over requires a lot of force. So we're going to go through the key points of the two kicks that I use to knock Bob over. The key points are essentially the same. First of all, you're not within striking distance. Neither you to him or him to you. This is a technique for when you're further away. And in fact, quite a bit further away. The key is not to cross step. If you cross step, A, it's slow, and B, it puts you in a vulnerable, vulnerable position before you can deliver the kick. Not least because this can easily be knocked out from me if he sweeps me there. Good. So we want to be fast. This gets you in fast, or at least initiates the fast movement. You're still safe because he can't reach this front foot. Now what we're going to do is we're going to replace this front foot with the rear foot very quickly. We're not just going to put the rear in the same place as the front, we're actually going to go past it. So as I hop, this happens. And I get in there very, very quickly. So you can see Now, to make sure that Bob doesn't react to the leg, as I complete the hop, I throw my fingers towards his eyes. A is a distraction, and B, if he doesn't block it, I can strike with it. And immediately after, my knee comes up. So the movement of the hand disguises the movement of the leg. Step, swap, and in. Now when it comes to the kick itself, you must have tremendous stability in your support leg. If you're not stable on your support leg, you will not be able to deliver force with the kicking leg. So to use an analogy, if you are wearing one roller skate on your support foot and you try to kick, you'd go all over the place. So the more rooted you are on that support leg, the more power you'll have in your kick. But you're not just delivering force that way, you're also delivering force that way. So you need to push down and forward with both legs at the same time. That's how you that's how you knock Bob over by delivering that force. Now, the basic rules of physics tell us that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So when you're pushing against Bob, Bob is also pushing against you. So when you deliver so many pounds or so many kilos of force into Bob, that same force is coming back at you. So you must have a stable leg that will allow you to absorb that. It absorbs it in your routing, hits the ground, comes back up through you. So there's a, a constant equal and opposite reaction, equal and opposite reaction until one of you goes. Of course, that only takes a split second. But bear in mind how well rooted Bob is. He's got a wide, heavy base, and you're standing on this one little foot. And I've got particularly small feet. So that one foot. That I'm supporting myself on has got to overcome this entire base here. And the only way I can do that is by having a rooted stance. And when you're using the side kick, You need to end up in this position so that when
when you push, you push like that. Same, same principle, both legs pushing together like that. You're not kicking this way, you're kicking this way. if he goes over, or you're ready to recover if he does not. 